Welcome to the Casino Skunk Secret Society. I'm Ralph, and today we are doing impromptu interview number two. That's right. Yesterday I went on social media. I put out the call to anybody who wanted to be on the podcast, and I got a response from Trader Brandon. He's my friend who I play Fireball Island with every week on Sundays. He's also a huge vinyl fan, Ghostbusters nerd, Tiki geek, and so much more. He's also written a book called Mystic Libations, which is a D&D slash tiki theme recipe book for tiki drinks. He also produced an album that I have on vinyl that you can also get on vinyl at TraderBrandon.com, which follows the adventures of Trader Brandon from the pages in the graphic novel. And I've put that music in this podcast. So if you like it, head over to TraderBrandon.com and pick up that vinyl. It's a great looking vinyl. And I can't recommend it enough. So without further ado, here's my impromptu interview with Trader Brandon. <laughs> um, yeah, I, be, I did this last month. It's really funny. And what happened was, is I got the director of the last blockbuster. Oh, shit. <laughs> and... We had been following each other on Facebook for 15 years. Oh, God. Because he used to listen to my old Lost podcast. And um, he didn't know, like, I didn't know he was the director of The Last Blockbuster. And he didn't That's know funny. that I did, it came from the VCR. Mm. And it was really bizarre. <laughs> it was really bizarre. That's funny. That... Um, so, yeah, we kind of were in the same world. Yeah, you never know. You never know who's going to show up. No, no. So this is it. This is going to be the show. I, I'll, I'll probably do an intro after because I hate oh, okay. doing I hate doing intros in front of people or live. <laughs> it drives me nuts. I can't because it feels so scripted, and I don't. Yeah, like, yeah. We uh, when I started my Lost podcast in two thousand six, and at the time every other podcast was like kind of structured a similar way mm. <laughs> where they would do like an intro and then a recap of the whole episode. And I was like, no, 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 I just want a conversation. Yeah. So I try yeah. to keep it pretty loose. Um, so yeah, this is, I'd, I'd rather just have a conversation with someone than yeah. like yeah. do stuff. No, I get it. And then this was the, the last one I did like this. Um, I had to lie. It was really hard to come up with questions because it's not like I had seen the movie. <laughs> and so I'm like, oh, shit. Okay. Um, all right. So I think it turned out all right, though. But, yeah, That's no funny. more. It's not going to be more than a half hour. Um, That's funny. But, yeah, I mean, we can talk about literally anything. Um, yeah, I don't, whatever. And, I mean, anything from your new book coming out. Yeah. yeah um, Trader Brandon and Tiki stuff in general. Uh, Fireball Island. Fireball <laughs> Island. Vinyl. <laughs> oh yeah, vinyl. Sure. Oh my sure. gosh! Did you? I don't know if you saw it yesterday. Waxworks posted a video. I'm a little. I'm a little upset. Oh. I didn't win. I was really proud of my tweet. I know, but I the... thought that tweet was funny, and I couldn't find <laughs> the person who won, so I don't know what I lost to. But I thought that was a funny tweet. <laughs> Do you think it's random? Do you think it's a random selection? I, I don't know. I, don't I keep know. trying to win one for you. I'm ge yeah yeah I'm guessing it's random because they put oh I don't know it's either random because they put the hashtag uh -huh. or that's just an easy way for them to find them all but yeah, I don't know I don't know and especially if I feel like if you tweet that with a specific image or something uh -huh. that the response should have to do with that image so the image of him laying down writing his tail <laughs> and, and he can literally do this in his sleep was really funny. <laughs> right. I uh, don't know. I just don't want to spend that on that. I'm just, I, they, yesterday they po they posted that I they had to that. get I a, did see that. a new insane. warehouse. They get insane. a new warehouse just for the slip cases. I, I cannot wait. Um, luckily, they're pretty good with their timelines and they said shipping yeah. in March. Yeah, no, they're real good. So... I'm getting I'm getting really anxious. And I like the sort of like transparency of waxwork. I do too. I like that they're very like, hey, look at what we're doing. Hey, yeah. here's this. It's... Hey, here's a video at our work like, you know, and opposed to others which we <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> remain Dude, nameless. You're, you're in the dark. And I have um, one record that I ordered on December 3rd that they received at their warehouse three god. weeks ago oh god and it just shipped on friday <laughs> so <laughs> it's like okay mm, yeah. no rush no yeah. rush yeah take your time i i was i had like maybe a dozen records before the quarantine right and now i have at least 40 yeah at least 40 yeah, I've got probably twenty or thirty here of, of just and and very few, you know, very specific ones that I bought. But I go, oh yeah, oh I'll get that one. Oh, I'll get yeah. It's, it's definitely been a quarantine hobby. Yeah, and then the last week, I, I think I had three Elfman scores on vinyl, mm-hmm. like for the last I don't know twenty years. <laughs> and then oh. um, this last week, I got four more, and then I just purchased another one uh, yesterday. I, uh, okay. So my mom sends me a $50 gift card for my birthday for Amazon. I'm like, cool. I'm going to get a record. I get, or I'm going to get two records. And then I found that they had, um, a night breed by Danny Elfman, mm. uh, from 1990. It was a promo record. They only released in a promo record, which usually nice. goes for like 130, 150. And they had it for 48 bucks. So I'm like, okay. Done. And it said it had never been played. And I'm like, cool, I'll take it. Um, and nice. then I found out like Waxworks, what, that was their seventh album they put out was Nightbreed. Oh, and, wow. And even those were going for like on eBay, like 129, 100 huh. plus like that. So I got the original 90s version. But nice. yeah, now I'm nice. getting all the Elfman stuff, all that Batman era. And I don't, oh, even, yeah. have, I don't even have Batman. <laughs> so I got, Mondo still has Batman, don't they? Yeah, I'm pretty sure you can still get it. Yeah, I've, I because I yeah I'm looking at it right here because I got it and I got Back to the Future three a couple weeks ago from them because they were still like stragglers on their site and I was like done. They're no just, problem. They just do scores too, which is well, I'm sort of. I was surprised, so I got I got Edward Scissorhands. Yeah, and I got was that one. surprised that they put the Tom Jones song at the end. It totally threw me for a loop because it wasn't on the original album. It's like they had extra <laughs> space and they were like, okay, let's put on it's Tom Jones song. Which makes sense and it's cool, but yeah, it would definitely throw you off. You're like, what the? Yeah. What the what? It was a bonus for sure. Um, God, that set's amazing. Yeah. It, yeah. I, I, it, there's the toss up between that and the Bride of Frankenstein. That bride is stunningly it's, beautiful. It, the artwork, I mean. I, I kind of bought it for the artwork alone. Oh, I did too. I bought it for the artwork. I bought the fog for mm-hmm. the artwork. Um, uh, yeah, there's definitely a handful that I go, I don't even care if I ever open them. Like, I have several vo- versions of Bride of Frankenstein, but that artwork was stunning. Anything, anything that Paul Mann does, like, I'll buy it. You know, who did he did all the Mandalorian art, but right. like his Ghostbuster vinyl is beautiful and i'm like yeah like i don't have enough out copies of that album uh but that's fine like i don't care you didn't get the mandalorian did you i did not so so it sold out on mondo sure and then disney emporium released another 1500 of the boxes on their site and it sold out in like two days but that art's amazing. The the thing, like, oh, man, I'm not the biggest Universal Monster fan. Not saying I'm not a fan all of it. All of his stuff is, is stunning. But I, like, I only first saw all the Universal Monsters movies, like, for the first time, like, within the last five years. Okay. Um, and, um, but the good thing is, is the, I love Flash Gordon serials from the 30s. And they used Bride of Frankenstein music, music. Yeah. in that serial. So I'm like, okay, well, at least I'll enjoy the music. <clears throat> even though I don't, I'm not super familiar with the movie and uh, God, uh, it's, it's become an obsession and I've been trying to hold off on just buying everything I see. But I think getting that Godzilla set sort of helped me. That'll, that'll, yeah, that'll hold you off for a while. <laughs> right. Right. Um, every once in a while, I'll bring it up. And I think, cause I think Stevie forgot, Oh, at one God. point forgot that I had it coming to me because she asked me what I wanted for birth- my birthday. And I was stupid enough to say, oh, you already got me Godzilla. 
<laughs> I shouldn't have said anything. Oh, well. But, um, dude, I cannot wait for that. It's going to be so big. I cleared off. I cleared off another shelf on my yeah, entertainment center wait. to put it up there. Um, you, you still need its own shelf. You got to buy it. Just buy it. Uh, uh, Just do it. I, it uh, it's, it's four, uh, I know it's four fifty, but you're getting eighteen records and free the shipping. Problem, this is this is the stupidity of my logic, right? So I go, oh, I really want that box set. It's gorgeous. I I want it. I don't even know that I've ever watched one of. <laughs> there, like uh, yeah. I know them. I love them. But like yeah. I couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't hum a tune of that music from save my life. But the funny thing is, I'm like, oh, 450. I can't. I just can't. I can't. But I have no problem going on to like sideshow and going thousand bucks for a four foot wide uh, Ghostbusters marquee sign. Yeah, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Done. Don't even think about it. But I mean, you're like a huge Ghostbusters fan, though. Yeah, that's my jam. That's my yeah, jam. yeah. Yeah. For me, well, I'm not gonna say Godzilla's my first thing that I love. Uh, Star Wars, Green Lantern, James Bond, then Godzilla. But still, like, I love film music so much. And, yeah. I mean, these are, all the scores oh, yeah. are great. And uh, so, and then the the other thing is a lot of them haven't been released in the United States before. Mm. So this is the only way you're going to be able to hear them. I, I cannot. I hope it comes on, like, a Friday. <laughs> and you have then, the, whole, the, whole web, the whole weekend to just, enjoy it. Just all 18, front to back. Oh, I can't wait. I'm. I'm thrilled. Uh, Randy Edelman's uh, score for Ghostbusters 2 has never been released, but they're releasing it this year. It released on and vinyl? It, uh, don't know yet. They just, Sony, Sony Masterworks is releasing it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's supposed to come out in 2021. They haven't said vinyl. They haven't said what. But just the fact that that's finally coming out, I'm, I'm pretty I, excited. I have a copy of it. I can send it to you nice <laughs> it's not i don't know i don't know how i ended up with it but i've like been i've listened to score since i was like four years old sure yeah my mom wouldn't let me watch indiana jones she she uh or raiders <laughs> of the lost ark so we're talking a good 40 years of listening to this stuff and i just acquire things people people know when they find stuff that i would be the one that would appreciate it and so right. it just comes across so oh Give it to Ralph. He'll he'll like it. It's crazy. Like like I would just get stacks of CDs. People just give me, and it'd be like, oh, this is like a promo for Goodwill Hunting. This was never released wide. <laughs> I'm like, okay, cool, thanks. Or the the score for AI. Um, yeah, right. I think there was a soundtrack album, mm. but this was like for your consideration, Academy Award, full score. I'm like, oh, nice. awesome, nice, like, yeah. So I just acquire this stuff, <laughs> but. <laughs> I don't. I don't remember how I got the Ghostbusters two, but I I have a Ghostbusters two score, so I can I can nice. uh, lend you my copy. Yeah. You know you know what to do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, if anybody else wants it, hit me up. But if they do an official release, I mean, I don't know if I would get the vinyl. Yeah. I, I need. I know. I, I, I well, I would just because, but. Uh... Yeah, I don't know. I'm just I'm excited. And if 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 if, if somebody like Mondo or whatever lets Paul Mann do the art again, then yeah, I'm totally in. But, I got the um, I got the uh, the CD club from Vary Sarabond, um, okay. Ghostbuster CD. Um, yeah, back I don't know. This had to have been like 20 years ago when um, when all we had was the soundtrack with like what maybe two or even just one. Uh, yeah, yeah. it was the tracks. theme and it was Dana's theme. Yeah, That's it was right. Just those two. And uh, man, I was so excited when I got that. And I yeah. I got that and I put it on my computer. And then <laughs> um, my friend uh, Jay, who's a huge Ghostbusters fan, um, I'm like, you got to get the score. And I sat there in, I think it was Mac uh, Instant Messenger and would drop tracks. I would have to zip up one track. <laughs> drop it in the messenger. This is the only way to get it to him. And we spent like something like an hour, me just dropping <laughs> zip individual zip files over to him. Cause it was like sold out like right away. I think they only did like something like 3000 or something pressings of like probably the greatest 
score to a comedy of all time? Yeah, I, I listened to it. Uh, I listened. To, yeah, I would agree. I listened to the vinyl the other day, uh, building the new Ecto uh, Lego set, the really big, ridiculous, <laughs> large one. Uh, and and I was talking to another friend during quarantine that same thing with the you know collecting records and list. But it's amazing how the great thing about records seems to be like it makes you sit and listen to the music. Right. So just listening when you're in the car, or listening when you're doing something else. You're my friend Chelsea was mentioning that the other day, the the process of listening to a record yeah. is like the greatest music experience. And I've come to appreciate that. Like I, I, there's something about, I mean, you're making a choice to listen to an entire album <laughs> and then, right. Right. And then you got to like be paying attention to get up and flip over the album. Um, right. So in this time of quarantine, when I'm sick of watching TV, I'm sick of watching movies. I'm sick of playing video games. It's nice to just get up, thumb through, look at all the artwork and, and put one on. Um, it's, it, it gives you like, like, I don't know, just a moment to like enjoy something. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it, but I love, I've been loving it. And, um, I, my friend on record store day, I think ended up going to a record store and he saw that Ghostbusters album. Mm. And he sent me a picture and it was like 40 bucks or something, or I don't know how much. Nice. And I'm like, I literally two days ago just spent $450 on a box set. Oh. So I still don't have it, but <laughs> once the, once the don't box forget. comes, the floodgates are going to open. I can't wait to see the size of that thing. I know I want to do an unboxing, but I don't think I have enough room on my desk <laughs> <laughs> to do it i've never really i've only i've not really into unboxings but i feel right. like this art should be appreciated and so i want to show off the set somehow so i'm gonna have to figure out a way i might bust out the vhs camera because I, I know i can hook that to my computer there you go and do it that way that but, would work man um okay i want to talk about your book okay i i i ordered one <laughs> you did and i'm you did. i'm I'm probably keeping you from writing right now. <laughs> no, it's okay. I was working. Uh, and then, yeah, I was like, you know what? This is good. It's a good time. for. A I usually, I'll pretty much work all day until about five o'clock. Yeah. I'll work all day till five o'clock and then I'll, I'll take a break, have dinner, do whatever. And then I'll grab the laptop again about seven or eight and, and go back to work. Um, but yeah, it's coming along. It's very uh, exciting. It's it. We were, 220 225 255 funded so that's crazy gotta make it look gotta make it look good now yeah what now uh, so for my listeners just to ex kind of give a quick explanation of what this book is because it it seems pretty cool like if you're a fan of <laughs> of like maybe three or four different things <laughs> it's, chances are you'll be a fan of the book but i mean i don't yeah. know i mean can people still buy yeah, it will people still be able to buy it after the fact you will. You can buy it after. Okay. Uh, we'll have it on our website after. But yeah, it's uh, it's called Mystic Libations, and it is a cocktail book, uh, essentially, of over 100 original recipes, all original to our book, created by uh, a good friend, uh, Roy Hansel, who uh, your your so your SoCal listeners may know from Trader Sam's Enchanted Tea. But yeah, 100 original recipes, uh, non-alcoholic drinks, alcoholic drinks, of course. And uh, there's some vegan offerings in there, even uh, oddly enough, figure that out. But uh, yeah, it, it, and then it's all has to do around gaming and around uh, kind of that uh, that that famous uh, fantasy role playing game known as D and D. Uh, and yeah, so it kind of just it, we created uh, my friend Todd Stashwick and I put it together. It started out uh, he got me into D and D during quarantine. So yeah, quarantine has brought vinyl rec. Uh, stronger, and it brought D&D &D into my life. Um, but uh, we started playing D&D &D together, and I would make cocktails for our game nights, and then everybody's like, man, these are really good. And then we started uh, kind of thinking about it and going, hey, should we actually like make a book out of this? We're not doing anything else during quarantine. Um, so, uh, yeah, so we did it. And uh, we're just, we're wrapping it up. We put it on Kickstarter, because uh, we... I thought, and we both thought that it would be popular no matter what, but we we had no idea what we need. Um, so we kind of used Kickstarter to help us with that, help us answer that question of, you know, well, do we print 100 of these or how many you want to print, you know, type of question. 
um, right. and ended up ended up the Kickstarter was close to 800 copies. Um, so a little little more than we uh, anticipated there. But uh, <laughs> so so we're we're working on the book. We're wrapping it up. Uh, I'm doing all the layouts and and putting all the pieces of the puzzle together. <laughs> and uh, in in addition to all the drinks, if you play an original game that goes in the back of the book that you can either lay into your campaign uh, seamlessly or it's good for some one shots uh, whenever you feel like playing. And then there's tons of artwork from guys that I used to work with at Imagineering and and some local artists here in Orlando. And and uh, yeah, it's just, it's just it's it's when you let a team of nerdy people uh create their own thing in quarantine this is what you get yeah i'm looking forward to my copy um i'll, I'll make sure i'll make sure to send it out first <laughs> okay <laughs> i don't want any of this mondo business going on <laughs> i mean it, it, by the as soon as the labels created it needs to be but on its I don't way print it, i don't print the labels well you know it's funny too don't because if i print the label um, I have to print like the shipping form for the mailman so he can scan like the one form instead of 800 different boxes. Uh, right. And you have to do my program only lets me print the shipping form the day I print the label. Uh -huh. So, yeah, if I print the label, that box is going out like we're moving. I don't uh, I can't sit on them. So, yeah. yeah, none of that. None of that sitting around nonsense. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. There's some really good drinks in there and, and all sorts of and they've got, you know, it's only if you if you. Uh, yeah, it's the same type of same type of thing I did there. We're doing here, so named funny names, and they all have little backstories and uh, all that good stuff, but in in a different realm. Yeah, and if there's a Fireball Island version or a Fireball Island drink, <laughs> we need to create our own Fireball Island book. That's what we need. We have the D and D cocktail book, then we need the Fireball Island cocktail book. I think that's going to be a lot less people. It's gonna reach. Well, there'll be like twenty, be like twenty copies, but it'll be fine. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the game itself lends itself to all kinds really of do that. imagination. <laughs> now that we now that we say that out loud, I'm like, oh, now I really want to do that. Yeah, <laughs> count me out. <laughs> I don't need I don't need to be <laughs> writing or drawing or. Uh, it sounds I I do not envy your. I mean, I'm super happy that it it got funded like more than twice oh, yeah. over. But at the same time, yeah. I mean, I feel like but, that adds so much more pressure. Oh, it is. It's a ton. It's yeah. a ton. Yeah. And uh, and and I've had other buddies that have done Kickstarters, and they were like, "Well, when the uh, when the campaign is over, is when the you know serious work begins." And yeah, I mean, I uh, much like our friend at Waxworks, I will probably have a have to go get a a warehouse to deal with it because it'll be it'll be pallets and pallets and pallets of books, and mm. my garage right now is full of pallets of tiki mugs and and stuff like that so yeah it's it's it's, it's going to be a lot of work from here on uh to get them all out and stuff but that's it's part of the deal and all that stuff you can get at traderbrandon.com right uh you will be so yeah that yeah. later in the summer you can get it at traderbrandon.com uh or todd's website over at the nerd circus.com we will both be uh be carrying it uh, a couple of weeks after month or so after we get all the kickstarters out but you can Follow, you know, obviously I'll post about it on Instagram, and uh, if you go to the website, you can sign up for the newsletter and and all of that. But uh, yeah, we'll we'll have them available once we get all the all the heavy lifting done. Mm -hmm. And if you want to get vinyl, yeah, Trader Brandon's record, Trader Brandon record. See, that's what happens. See, that's what happens when you leave me in quarantine, and I go, man, record. <laughs> I'm going to make a record. You know, that's what yeah. happened. That's, that's exactly I, what goes wrong. That's the thing is I, <laughs> I started looking up. There's a, there's a place that presses uh, vinyl here uh, in Buena Park. They've okay. been doing it for like 35 years. And I'm like, Ooh, I want to make a record and I have nothing sure. to offer. I have nothing that I can put on wax. What a podcast. No one's going to listen to a podcast on a record. Uh, so I'm like, oh, maybe I shouldn't make a record, but I really want to for some reason. Right. Just make um, a seven inch, make a little one. Take up a take up guitar or something. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I just want to produce a record. I'll find somebody <laughs> produce a record. I just I just want. Yeah. To... Yeah. No, I I get it. I get it. Yeah. But you're doing it. Yeah, it was uh, it was fun, and the and the company we found it was actually cheaper to do a twelve inch record than a seven inch because our we started out going we'll just do a little seven inch that'll be fun it'll be it'll be silly, uh, but it was cheaper to do the full size so we were like all right here we go so 
Start filling it up we with did. music. Yeah, let's, yeah, we got. We need more music. Yeah, put that Tom Jones. <laughs> yeah, <you> should have <laughs> put the Tom Jones song at the end. No, it's, it's just for filler. It's yeah. just the, and and that'd be hilarious. That'd be the greatest like Muppet style running gag. Is just anytime you need filler, you use the same Tom Jones song <laughs> with these hands. Yeah, every time oh, it has man. nothing to do with anything. But yeah, with these hands is always on the album. <laughs> Um, is there anything else you want to talk about? We've got about maybe like five minutes or less, or we can just split out now so oh. you can get back to typing or doing layouts. <laughs> back to Photoshop. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean that. I you know it should be it should be noted that uh, we we've passed our thirty fifth game of our weekly Fireball Island game. It's nuts. That's pretty crazy. I mean, that's you know it started out. I thought we'd just play for a few weeks, no big deal. But uh, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. When Michael asked me if I wanted to, I'm like, well, heck yeah, of course I would. And now mm. it's like this weekly tradition that pretty invested now. Pretty it's in- like it's gotten to a point where <laughs> we just kind of show up. Like at first, it's it was like, oh, are we, do you want to play on Sunday? Yeah, and okay, one o'clock, okay. And then it got to a point where we were just like, it was automatic. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. I'm coming up on uh, one year on furlough i think i think it was march 15th i believe yeah is when disneyland shut down so i'm like oh my gosh i can't believe it's still we're still doing this stuff maybe i should have written a book um (laughs) because you constantly think they're constantly saying oh we're gonna reopen oh we're gonna need more people and uh still nothing for me okay so i just keep podcasting No. Yeah, and, uh, yeah it's, it's it's insane to think of how long the park's been closed. It's it's nuts, and and I can't even imagine the amount of work it's going to take to get it running again. Right. You know, right. it's not like it's not like all those rides have been sitting there just slowly functioning for the last year. They've just been sitting there. Right. That's what buns me out. Is like I have friends who hadn't gone on like Rise of the Resistance, and I'm like, oh man, I hope you get a chance eventually. <laughs> Cause that ride's amazing. Yeah. Oh, it, yeah. I mean, I guess <laughs> hope it works. We we'll turn it back on. Yeah. I guess you guys are still open in Florida. We are. We so, are. Yeah. Oh, and but then, it's, it's, a, it's a free for all out here. Nobody, nobody cares. And I don't think this should be mentioned out in public, but during the <laughs> quarantine, I got my silver pass. Nice. And I can't use it. No. Yeah. It sucks. Like I waited so long. For, <laughs> I'm like, because when I, I used to work there, I worked there for 10 years. I came back and I know, and it, this this whole last like five okay. years was like, okay, just make it to five years and you can get your silver pass. And I finally do. And I can't go anywhere near the park. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. I even try to, I even try to take masks. I took a, like, I don't know, like 80 masks um, to the park a few weeks ago. I went at night during third shift and I was going to go give them like all these masks and I got stopped in downtown disney i could not enter downtown disney with my id because i was on furlough so they had to come out to a gate oh. to come retrieve masks that i was delivering i'm like that's, that's crazy that's my whole life i've yeah. had complete access or not my whole life but for the last like 15 years i've had complete access to that park and now it's weird it's, i can't even get weird it when downtown. you don't yeah it's weird when you don't it's it's yeah, yeah it's it's weird because i mean all the all the time that I worked there, because I worked in the park 2005, 2006, I worked in Adventureland, and then with eight, nine years of Imagineering, and, and always having just, yeah. Act, yeah, like you said, just at any time, just, hey, I need to go in and look at something, or I need to go in and do this, but yeah, I remember when, when that ended, and before I went over to Universal, <laughs> oh, I can't, I can't just go into the park anymore. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's weird, it's weird, like, yeah, I don't know. It's a bummer. I tried, you know, you try to, you like, I would just go to pick up presents. I would go to Galaxy's yeah. Edge and just like, oh, I need another lightsaber holder. <laughs> so I'll just go get it. <laughs> now, no lightsabers. Yeah. All right. Um, Different time. Yeah. Yeah. God, it feels like ages ago, too. Um, thanks for claiming the spot. We've already talked a no half problem. hour. I think that's good. Um, once again, uh, just traderbrandon.com. 
TraderBrandon.com, and then uh, Instagram is just at Trader underscore Brandon. All right. That's, cool. That's all the good stuff. All right, man. Thanks for coming on. All it right. was fun, see and I'll on, see you uh, Sunday. See you. <laughs> see you on the island. All right. <laughs> all right.